Okay. All right, boys and girls, probably for both of you, <laughs> but this is more for the long drivers out there, the aspiring long drivers, because I want to talk you through how I approach a long drive set and also how I practice without launch monitors. Because back in the days when I was starting off, I was for two years basically, I was practicing completely without launch monitors. So I was trying to get my numbers to, uh, from certain like indoor facilities all the time but when I was practicing outdoors on my regular practice I didn't have launch monitors so I had to tell by the ball flight what I had to change and well when you're out there and you're competing most of you guys don't have a launch monitor anyways out there so you have to make adaptions quickly and telling by your ball flight what's right and what's wrong so I very much love because I'm more on the like draw and hook side of things so I actually love to start up the set with a ball will be right best thing that can happen to to me because from then on I can just crush it basically so let's see if we can make that happen and then I want to talk you through all the quick fixes that I do to hit it straight so there's your six balls one is on the tee five on the floor and let's see how I start off oh that was borderline right that was it was straight it was more of a push but maybe still in the grid, don't really know, but it takes a while in a long drive to actually get your number back. It takes like two, one or two shots to actually get it back. So right now, I would just go with the same feel again and go from there. There you go. That was a little low in the face, just a little bit. So my quick fix, for that would actually be to tee it up a little higher but usually I'm more on the on the high end anyway so a low miss it is not too bad but let's try to hit this one to the right I really want to hit this one right because that was drawing a little bit so to correct that draw actually what I try to do is I try to make that, that take away a little steeper so take it more away to the outside and then to avoid a a close face I try to let the grip win the race against the heel and the toe on the way down. So boom, like that. So my feel is really an open face, basically, hopefully resulting in a square face. Let's see, let's go with that feel. That is still hooking, that was a bad hit. So that was a little bit on the toe, actually. So what I would try to do when I hit a lot on the toe is actually get a bit closer to the ball. But we have three balls left, no reason to freak out. Just go by the same feel, steep takeaway, and let the grip win the race. Let's go. Okay, is it time to freak out yet? I don't think so. So this is part of it. It happens that you miss hit it two times in a row. So now from, well, when I'm down in my last two balls, on that very, on that fifth ball, I actually try to exaggerate all the feels, like take it away like crazy steep and then really exaggerate all the feels to get that ball to the right side. Let's see. shot also borderline right so finally it was right and if I would start off like I wanted to like starting off with a shot like that I would actually move my ball position a little bit further left so the easiest fix actually for me when I compete is when I miss right, move my ball position a little bit more to my left foot because what's going to happen is um, because the the club is swinging in an arc it's moving in an arc I just hit the ball a little bit later, so it's going more left. Does that make any sense? It does. Okay, so let's do that again. Aim a bit to the right. Take it away steep. It win the race. And we got one in the grid, so we crush this one. A little bit harder. And that one, 
my best ball. <laughs> Last ball, best ball. Sometimes that happens. And you can tell really when you're practicing without launch monitors, you can really tell by the ball flight and how the apex looks like and how the whole like trajectory looks like. You can actually tell how much spin the ball has. So when it's going, when it's starting fairly low and it's ballooning up and taking off like an airplane, it usually has way too much spin so you want to get the spin down when it goes like penetrating forward and then falling down a ball flight that most people actually don't like as much because it's the opposite to an iron shot when you guys out there see iron shots you golfers you like that like low starting low launching ball going up in the air like staying in the air for such a long time then dropping down to the ground and pitching and leaving like landing softly on the green actually but in long drive it's the opposite so what you want to see is you want to see that penetrating ball flight forward that almost looks like a very boring ball flight so it's going like this so it's actually coming down in a certain descent angle and then still bouncing forward so that's very very important so you can tell by the ball flight how how much spin you actually have on the ball then keep in mind when you're hitting at driving ranges and you're at like 200 ball speed plus you're probably hitting balls that one are slower than competition balls at least and two spin more so really compare those balls at your indoor facility don't steal balls bring them back to the range actually but compare the two so you actually know what kind of numbers you have to look for and also so you can tell by the ball flight if that's fairly okay in competition so that's the two things and then well if you spin it too much or if I spin it too much in competition there's two things to solve this one is statically use less law I'm already on the lowest setting so I cannot do that but the second is do it dynamically and there's two things to it one thing is hit more up on the ball which I try to correct or try to manipulate by spine tilt not only at address but also towards the impact zone like this so I push into the ground and keep everything boom bouncing to the right and the second thing is actually leave your hands forward at impact towards impact that does not mean that's a feel that does not mean that you actually have your hands forward at impact with driver most people don't have that but the feel is definitely for me is definitely having them forward let's try that bomb another one let's go full throttle on this one shot but we can do better one last shot in long drive it's always one last shot just one more yeah just one one more one more, one more. in the meanwhile actually I say two more okay steep takeaway for me let the grip win the race Let's go. <sighs> that is good shot it's actually a good shot so what I want to do now is, I want to try aim right. Because I feel like in competition that's a viable way to actually correct your ball flight. But what you don't want to do is, when you're hooking it, you don't want to create a closed stance like this, with your shoulders like aligned straight and your stance actually being closed. Because then what you do is, most of the time, you create even like crazier hooks. So you want to aim right with your entire body, like everything going right, to then just let the ball draw back. So that's what we do here. Let's go. Pretty much. And as I said, we do two more. So this is for today. This is the last shot. And the last thing while you're watching, I want you to do is like the video subscribe to the channel guys because there's a lot to come i have a lot in the making right now and comment down below if you've tried to compete yourself and if you have not yet sign up for an event because long drive is different and i guarantee you you will be shaken when you tee up the first couple balls also somebody told me hitting the notification bell is kind of a good thing do that too so let's go last shot just for you 1.2 percent girls out there this is for you girls let's go See you in the next one.